Hey, it's Mr. E here, and our aim for this video is what is the basic idea behind variance and standard deviation? How do we calculate them? So what I want to do first is just talk about the basic idea, then I'm going to show you two ways to calculate manually and using the calculator. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Talk about the basic idea, then I'm going to show you how to manually calculate variance and standard deviation, and then on the calculator. All right, so to talk about the basic idea, uh, I want you to look at the data we're presented with here and think about the question I'm going to pose. So this data represents Tim Tebow's rushing yards during each game he started in 2011. And we also have the average yards he rushed per game. So here's the question. Do you think that the mean is an accurate representation of what he did in each game? Explain. So pause the video and think about that for a second. All right. So the question is basically saying, is the mean an accurate representation of what he did in each game? The answer is, well, hmm. It's not really an accurate representation of what he did in each game due to the fact that the data fluctuates. So that's a nice word there. Due to the fact that the data fluctuates from the mean to a great extent on many of the games, namely game 3 and games 9 to 11. So if you look at game 3, he rushed for 118, but his average is 56.64. That's a great fluctuation there and we see the same thing happening in games 9, 10, and 11. So the mean is not really an accurate representation of what he did each game. So this leads to what we call dispersion. Dispersion is a measure of how much the data fluctuates from the mean. So dispersion measures how much the data fluctuates from the mean. Now this is where variance and standard deviation come in. Variance and standard deviation are ways to measure dispersion. So we would expect Tim Tebow's uh, data from before to have a high variance and a high standard deviation because it fluctuates greatly from the mean. You know, the smaller the values of dispersion, the more consistent the data. We don't see that with Tim Tebow's rushing stats because they fluctuate. The, the data fluctuates from the mean. Okay, so how do we calculate variance? Well, we have this formula here for variance, and variance is represented by sigma squared. And for standard deviation, we have this formula. It's represented by sigma so you might notice from this that the standard deviation is really just the square root. So standard deviation is the square root that says the, oh boy, my handwriting is so awful. The standard deviation is the square root of variance. How's that? Okay, that's not that great, but that's what it's supposed to say. Standard deviation is just the square root of variance. Okay, so here's our first example. Calculate the variance and the standard deviation of the data given below. So it's our same data from our initial question. And you're being asked to calculate the variance and the standard deviation. Well, since standard deviation is just the square root of variance, let's go ahead and find the variance first. So here's the formula for variance. And we know our mean is 56.64. So let me just go through the formula manually. And then in our next example, we'll, we'll show how to do it on the graphing calculator. OK, so here's what you have to do with this formula. First, you have to subtract the mean from each of the values in the data set. So that's what, that's what this part is saying. Subtract the mean from each of the values in the data set. So that's what's being done here. 
59 minus the mean, 63 minus the mean, 118 minus the mean, 43 minus the mean, and so on and so forth. So that's the first step. Subtract the mean from each of the values in the data set. Then after you do that, you're going to square the results of those subtractions. So when we subtract this, we get 2.36. So what we want to do is square those results. Okay, when you square those results, you get these numbers. What you want to do after that is you want to add those numbers or add those squares. That's what this sigma means here, the summation. So add all those squares so when you add all those squares you know 2.36 squares 6.36 squared and so on and so forth when you add all those squares you get 9682.5496 and then you want to divide that number by the number of values in the data set so that's divide by 11 so when you divide by 11 you get 880.2314182 for the variance. So that's our variance. So let's go ahead and box that. Sigma squared is 880.2314182. Now, remember what I said. The standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So if you want to get the standard deviation, all you have to do is square root that 8. 80.2314182 and you get your standard deviation. So your standard deviation is this number here. Okay? All right, let's move on to our next example. So let me tell you what I'm trying to do with this example. So I made up some numbers here for an imaginary running back. And what I was trying to do with this example was keep the data more consistent. So that way we could compare Tim Tebow's uh, measures of dispersion to this consistent quarterback's measure of dispersion. Now we already saw Tim Tebow's variance and standard deviation. They were pretty high. So here the data is more consistent so you can expect a lower variance and a lower standard deviation all right it says the data given below is of an imaginary running back and how many yards he rushed for in 11 games calculate the variance and the standard deviation of the data given below round to the nearest tenth all right this time we're going to use the calculator so it's going to be a little faster so you're going to turn on your calculator and you're going to go to stat edit you're going to enter the data in there. So as you can see, I already entered the data. So you should have 11 elements total, okay, which is what I have. All right, now, here's what you're going to press next. You're going to go to Stat, or you should quit that window first. So then you're going to go to Stat, Calc, One Bar Stats, and you're going to press Second, one to get the list one and then you're going to press enter so there's our mean 60.54 and then i'll go over what all these symbols mean but what the calculator just gave us here which is one of the things we want is the standard deviation you see the sigma x there that's the standard deviation the standard deviation is 1.16 now let me point something out here the calculator does not give you the variance. So the calculator does not give variance. You have to find that. Now, you don't have to do that long formula once you know the standard deviation. Because what's the relationship between variance and standard deviation? Well, the variance is the standard deviation squared. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Earlier, we said the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if you have the square root of the variance, then square that to get the variance. 
So to get the variance, what we're going to do is we're going to take the standard deviation, so that's 1.16, rounded to the nearest tenth, and we're going to square that and round it to the nearest hundredth. I apologize, that's what I meant to say. So we're going to take 1.16, we're going to square that, and we get 1.35. So that's our variance, that's our standard deviation. Okay, let's think about this. Compared to Tim Tebow, this is a low standard deviation and this is a low variance. Why? Why is that? Well, go back and look at Tim Tebow's data. It fluctuates a lot. You know, it's, it's funny that his data fluctuates a lot because that's one of the things that the sports analysts say about Tim Tebow, that you just don't know what you're going to get from him. Well, that actually is a true statement. That is what the data shows. On any given Sunday, you don't know what you're going to get from him. You know, that's one of the things that makes him an exciting player. Anyways, I digress. The point is this. When the data is more consistent, you have low measures of dispersion. And when the data is inconsistent, or when it fluctuates a lot, such as um, Tim Tebow's data, you're going to have high measures of dispersion or high variances and high standard deviations. All right, so this is a list of what all these things mean on the calculator. You should copy these down because you should know what each of them means. So let me just go over it real quick. X bar is the mean. Sigma X is the sum of the elements. Sigma X squared is the sum of the squares of the elements. Capital SX, that's the sample standard deviation. Now, let me point something out here. We're not going to use that. We don't use sample standard deviation unless we're told. And we can talk more about what sample standard deviation means in class. But for now, it suffices to say that we're not going to use this measure. And Sigma X, that's your population standard deviation. That's the one we're going to use in our class. And n is the number of elements, and min, q1, median, q3, and max. You're familiar with that from our box and whisker plot. Min is the minimum value, q1 is the first quartile, median is the median, med is the median, q3 is the third quartile, and max is the maximum value. All right, so let me give you an example you can work on, and uh, we'll dismiss. So here's an example. Uh, I kept the numbers limited. Well, I didn't keep them. I actually found this problem online. But I was looking for a problem that is, doesn't have a high population so that it wouldn't take you a million years to do it. But go ahead. Find me the, the mean, the arithmetic mean. That's just x bar. Find me the arithmetic mean and find me the standard deviation of the data that's here. Okay, I hope this video helps. Take care.